Hi guys, welcome to our channel SK Study House. I'm Komal and I'm here to give you introduction to self. Guys, this is going to be a very basic and general introductory topic to the self. So, let's get started. Every organism or living thing is made up of cell. Every organism living thing which is present in our earth is made up of cell. It is considered as the smallest unit. Like plants and animals are alive, in the same way cells are also alive. So it is the very smallest unit which is having basic properties of life. Cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. Guys, this is the very basic definition of cell. Keep that in mind. Ki ye bhot ki basic structural and functional unit of life hai. Now, many cells will come together and they lead to the formation of tissues. So, bhot sari cells ek saath aake they will work in harmony and they lead to the formation of tissues. In the same way, many tissues will come together and they lead to the formation of organs. For example, epithelial tissue and connective tissue jo hai, they will come together and they form the skin. So, in the same way, many organs will come together and they lead to the formation of organ system. So, this example is heart, lungs, arteries and veins. All these organs come together to form circulatory system. So, ultimately, this organ system is lead to the development of human body. So, just as bricks are the building blocks of our house, in the same way, Cells are considered as building blocks of our life because our body is made up of cells just like bricks are made, our house is made up of bricks. So this point is also very important like cell is considered as building blocks of our life. So generally the study of cells is known as cell biology cellular biology or cytology cell ki study ko hum cell biology cellular biology ya cytology kehte hai. so let's look into the history of the cells like from where did the cells come from so there was a scientist named robert hooke in 1665 he was a british scientist he used to study living things under the microscope keep that in mind Microscope of that time were very not strong. They were not very advanced as they are the ones in current, player, current times. But still, he managed to make an important discovery. So, what he did was, he took cock cells. Cock cells are observed from bark of the tree. So, he took this cock cells and he observed it under the microscope. And what he observed was small Box like honeycomb hexagonal structures. Ye small hexagonal structures ko unhone cell ka naam diya. Because in Latin, the cell means small room. So ultimately, in 1665, Robert Hooke discovered the cells. Then later, in 1674, another scientist came, Anton van Leeuwenhoek from Holland. He also made important discoveries related to cell, but using with his improved microscope. He used a better version of microscope and he made many important discoveries in cell. So while talking about history, we should also talk about the cell theory. So basically the cell theory was proposed by Theodor Schwann and Matthias Sheldon. So, they stated that the cell, all living organisms are composed of one or more cells. They also stated that cell is a basic structural and functional unit of life. 
The third postulate they gave was that the new cell arise from within the old cells, specifically from the nucleus. But later came the scientist Rudolf Virchow, which stated that no, all cells arise from the pre-existing cells with the help of cell division. So while thinking of cell theory, always keep that in mind, these three scientists, Theodor Schwann, Matthias Sheldon and Rudolf Virchow, who gave all these three postulates. So later on, many some points were added into the cell theory and then came the modern version of cell theory which stated that the genetic information can be passed from one cell to another cell with the help of DNA. Then all cells have same chemical composition and the cell performs major functions which are responsible for the growth and development of organism. So these points were added and which led to the development of modern version of cell theory. So let's look into some basic general features of the cells. Cells exist in variety of shapes and sizes, be it cuboidal, spherical. <laughs> cells are present in variety of shapes and size. So while talking about size, you should keep in mind the smallest cell is of mycoplasma. Mycoplasma is a bacteria who is having 0.2 to 0.3 micrometers size and the larger cell is of ostrogeg which is about 15 to 18 centimeter long. So keep this in mind, smaller cell and larger cell. Apart from that, cells are the ones which are very much responsible to keep the organism live and functioning. Cells, because of cells, the organism is living and functioning. If cell starts dying, eventually it will lead to the death of organism. So there are two types of organism, unicellular and multicellular. Unicellular are the ones which are having one single cell. Uni means one. So, so this single cell is capable of making that organism live and functioning. Examples are bacteria, amoeba, paramecium. In the same way, multicellular, as the name suggests, multi means many, more than one cells. So multicellular organisms are the ones which contains more than one cells and these cells come together, they work in harmony and they lead to the functioning of the life of that particular organism. Examples are we. We are living, we are multicellular organisms, plants, animals, fungi, they are multicellular organisms. I want to give you an information like it is estimated that approximately 10 to the power of 13 that is 10 raised to 13 cells are present in our human body. Yes, human body is made up of millions and millions of cells. So guys, thank you. That's all for today. As I told you, this was going to be a basic general introduction to the cells. So thank you. If you like our video, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much.